Here I have got some letters from A to H in ascending order. I want to make a cumulative sequence from them. That means the first cell will have A, the second cell have AB, then ABC and so on. To do this, I have to use a formula in cell C6 equal to C5 ampersand B6. Press enter and autofill the rest. And that's it. But the problem here is that you have to keep an empty row above. Otherwise, it will not work. This is where the magic of a scan function comes into play. Hey there, Excel enthusiasts! Welcome to Excel Demi, your go-to destination for mastering Excel and Excel VBA related challenges. I'm Shahriyar Abra Rafid and in today's video, I'll be showing a detailed guide on the scan function in Excel. So, let's roll up our sleeves and get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Before starting, we should know what the scan function is. The scan function works within a given array. It uses a user-defined lambda function on each element of this array, then produces an array that captures the intermediate values generated during the scanning process. This functionality is particularly useful for creating running totals and performing other computations that showcase incremental results. Looks confusing? No problem. With the examples in this video, you will find it very simple and clear. Let's see the arguments first. Click on cell D5 equal to scan. Press tab to insert the highlighted function. Initial value. It establishes the initial value for the accumulator. Array. Represents an array targeted for scanning. Function. Refers to a lambda function used to perform the array scan. As I am working with text, I'll set the initial value to blank. As the array argument, select the letters which are in the B5 to B12 range. As the function argument, I'll use the lambda function. This function takes two parameters, accumulator and value. The accumulator adds up and gives the final result. And value is the calculation of what we do to each number in the group to find the total. As the accumulator, I'm inserting x, y. Here, x is the initial value, which is blank. And y is the individual element in this array. And the calculation is x ampersand y which concatenates the two strings close the parenthesis again close the parenthesis and press enter and the entire results comes in a while no need to use the fill handle let's break down the output in cell d5 we got a initial blank and the first element from the array a gives that then in cell d6 the intermediate value from the previous lambda function is a concatenates with the second element value b gives the output ab in cell D7, now the intermediate value is AB, which is the output of the previous step. It concatenates the third element value C with it and returns ABC. Carrying the logic onward, I got the value ABCDEFGH in cell D12. In this example, I'll calculate the cumulative interest of a credit card debt over 10 months. The monthly payment is $180. As I repay the loan, the principal amount decreases, so the interest will also decrease every month. I'll add up the interest starting from the first month. For the second month, I'll consider the interest from the first month plus the interest from the second month. Similarly, for the third month, it's the interest from the first plus second plus third month, and so on. So in cell F7, place the formula equal to scan. Here, I'll work with numbers. That's why I'm using zero as the initial value. Select the interest column D7 to D16 range as the array argument. As the function argument, I'll use the lambda function. In the lambda function, I'll use the same x, y as accumulator. And as the value, write x plus y as I want to add up the interests. Close the parenthesis and press enter. And see the magic. Let's understand how the formula works. As the initial value, x is set to 0. And y is set to 24.05, which is the first element in this array. So, x plus y equals 24.05. In the next cycle, the previous result of x plus y is set as the value of x. And the second element from the array becomes a value of y. Adding them up returns 45.63. Again, in the next step, the output 45.63 from the previous calculations become the value of x. And y takes the third element from the array 19.07.
adding them returns 64.7. Thus, continuing the cycle up to the F16 cell and the final result is 124.58. We can validate this result, get the total sum of the interest column and it's matching the value in cell F16. That means the function is working perfectly. Here, I have got the net cash flows of a business by subtracting cash outflows from cash inflows. I can find the cumulative cash flow for the entire timeline, like the previous example. Let's type the formula equal to scan. As the initial value, I'll use 0, comma. As the array argument, I'll select cells in the E5 to E20 range, comma. As the function argument, I'll use the same function, which is the lambda function. Again, I'll use the same parameter x comma y and the same calculation x plus y close the parenthesis and press enter however we tend to calculate the cumulative cash flow only for that business year which means that next year's calculation starts from zero so in this example after december 2022 i don't want to continue adding up the total rather i want to reset the total from january 2023 so, cell F13 should have a starting value of 30,500, which is the net cash flow of that month. How could we do that? We need to edit our previous lambda function for this. The logic I will apply here is that whenever it encounters a new year, it will reset the initial value of x to 0. Let's change the formula in cell F5. First, I will edit the formula, then I will explain it. Now, we don't want to simply add x plus y. We need to examine the date to determine if it's January or any other month. Since we are not directly inspecting the date column, which is in the column B, we need a function to instruct lambda to look three cells left. The offset function can help us achieve this. The offset function begins from where y is currently. It stays on the same row as we escaped this argument. By default, it will take zero and then shifts three columns to the left. The outcome of the offset function will be checked by the month function to determine the month number. The month function returns one for January, two for February like this and 12 for December. We'll check the output using an if function to see if it's anything other than one, which means any other month except January. If you want to start your fiscal year from July, then use seven here. If this logic is true, it will perform the standard X plus Y calculation. If the condition is not true, then it will set the accumulator back to zero. We can do this by taking the current value of the accumulator X and multiplying it by zero, and then adding the outcome to Y. That's why the F13 cell gets the value of the net cash flow of only the month of January and again aggregates the rest until the next year. In this tutorial, I have shown three examples of using the scan function in Excel. Follow them carefully to apply this knowledge in your practical field. Download the workbook from the description box so you can practice it yourself. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, please let us know in the comments section. You can have a glance at exceldemy.com or join our thriving Exceldemy community forum where you can post your Excel and Vivia challenges and get solutions from experts and fellow users. If you liked this video, consider subscribing and click the bell icon. Thanks for watching.